Good morning. Welcome to Corinth Christian. Let's stand together this morning. Let's join with the angels in singing glory to God in the highest.
this morning you may be seated as you're being seated let's watch this baptism together um, that over the course of her journey uh, she has been brought back into the church and, and as a part of that journey she has realized now uh, that she is ready to declare uh, Jesus as Lord and Savior as her next step and so we are excited for you Alexis are you ready to do this thing yeah all right, repeat after me. I believe, I believe that Jesus is the Christ, that Jesus is the, Christ the, Son of the, living God, the Son of the Living God, and I claim Him, and I claim him as, my Lord as my Lord and Savior. And Savior. Hey, give it up for her. All right, because of your confession of faith, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit for the forgiveness of your sins and the gift of the Holy Spirit. Hey, wonderful that we get to keep watching videos like that, right? Yes. Hey, welcome to the 1015 service this morning. Uh, my name is Luke. I'm the youth minister on staff, and we are glad that you are here, whether you're in the room or, or you're tuning in online. It's nice to have you. Uh, hey, if you're a guest with us this morning, I'd like to talk to you for just a second. Uh, welcome. We are so glad that you are here with us this morning. Uh, we would actually love to connect with you, and there's a way that that can happen. You can pull out your phone right now and go over to Corinth.cc. Uh, there you can click on I'm new and fill it out and we'll connect with you that way. Or if you're more of a pen and paper type of person, there's a card in the seat back in front of you that says let's connect. You can take it, fill it out, and drop it in a bucket as the, uh, they go by later on in the service. Then, hey, after the service is over, make sure you go out those double doors and over to the guest services kiosk. Uh, someone is going to be there to greet you and to give you a gift. It's our way of saying it means the world uh, that you are with us this morning. So thank you for being here. Uh, Christmas Eve uh, is happening here at Corinth, December 24th, uh, and we've got services going on at 2.30, 4, and at 5.30, and then one in the uh, sanctuary at 5, and I want to invite all of you. Here's the deal. Now that I have invited all of you, it's your turn to invite someone else. So guys, if you want to start passing these out, uh, these are little invite cards. They're handy dandy. They look clean and neat. And, and what you do right now is take one, take two, take three, take 24, what, however many you take. Uh, make sure you give them all out. Invite your neighbors, uh, invite your coworkers uh, to come on out and, and come to the Christmas Eve service. Say, hey, I'm going to come to the 2.30 to the service and maybe after the service we can go get some food, right? So promise me you'll invite someone, yes? Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah, there we go. I like it. Let's, let's get that. We're excited for that Christmas Eve celebration. Uh, Christmas is only 10 days away. You guys believe that? It's right there. It's getting there. So uh, Christmas traditions. How many of you have Christmas traditions with your family? Decorate a tree, go look at lights, something like that. I would like to suggest a new Christmas tradition this morning. Uh, back in 1974, uh, KFC, otherwise known as Kentucky Fried Chicken, uh, started an advertisement campaign in Japan. And the idea was Kentucky for Christmas. And so they told everyone in Japan, hey, on Christmas, December 25th, come on out and get yourself some chicken. And the thing is, it worked, and they did. And so they came out on Christmas, they got chicken, and to this day, every December 25th, people line the streets in Japan to get their Kentucky Fried. Doesn't that sound like an awesome tradition? Yes? Who wants to do it with me this year? I, I, I am all for it. Let's make it happen. Whether or not you do that, or eat ham, or turkey, we hope that your traditions and your memories are wonderful this year. Uh, hey, you're out here on a great Sunday. Jeremy and the band are going to lead us in some more worship here in a moment. Our senior minister, Adam Turner, is going to preach part two of Christmas playlist, and it's going to be a good Sunday. Make sure you stay connected, uh, corinth.cc, uh, your bulletins or social media, so that you don't miss out on anything you want to be a part of. Uh, let's do this. We'll pray, and then we'll continue on with our service this morning. Hey, God, thank you so much for the chance to gather together today. Uh, and to sit with people on our left and on our right who are all here for the same reason, to uh, lift your name high, to hear your word, uh, and to be encouraged and to be, to be challenged. And God, I pray that uh, through this time together that we would be able to smile, uh, that we would be able to laugh, and that we would be able to listen as you begin to do wonderful things in our hearts and in our lives. God, we, we pray a prayer of thanksgiving for you and all you do for us. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Holy 
set aside heaven's glories and that you became like us, you became a baby, that you uh, endured the, the hardships that we endure, that you endured the sufferings that we face, that you took our sins upon yourself. Jesus, we want to come and in and, and, and awe and wonder with love in our hearts, we want to give back to you. As we come out of this time of offering, we recognize how much you've given for us and so it's, um, it's, it's appropriate, it's right 
for us to surrender and to sacrifice and to give to you. Jesus, we want to make your name great here. And so we ask that you continue to work through our church. Take these offerings and use them for your kingdom and your glory. We love you, Jesus. It's your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, guys, I'll go ahead and invite y'all to pass those buckets uh, while, while we're chatting up here. You know, Luke was talking about making Kentucky Fried Chicken your Christmas tradition. So it was about a decade ago. Um, we had just wrapped up um, Christmas Eve services here, and this is whenever our kids were still kind of young, and so um, we, we decided that we were going to leave after the last Christmas Eve service, about 8, 8 30, 9 o'clock, and uh, drive all the way to Missouri to go see grandmas and grandpas after that. This is before we discovered Dramamine and Benadryl. Um, great combination right there, because you don't want them to get car sick or have allergies in the car, you know, and so... <laughs> Um, cause this is like, this will help them sleep, you know? And so as we were leaving town, uh, we decided, you know, we haven't had anything to eat, you know, for, for a while. And so, um, th- there was not anything open other than Taco Bell and Taco Bell before about a 13 hour road trip. No, not a great idea. And so, uh, we decided Kentucky Fried Chicken was open in Loganville. And so we pull in there and, um, is getting ready to do our order. And the guy says, Hey, welcome to Kentucky Fried Chicken. Uh, before you order, just so you know, we don't have any chicken. <laughs> it's like... Kentucky Fried Chicken? You're out of chicken? He's like, yeah, we got mashed potatoes and, you know, like macaroni and cheese and stuff, but no chicken. And so we did Taco Bell is what we did. It was a, it was a rough 12 hours. Um, so anyway, um, my name is Adam, and we're really glad that you're here. And thank you so much uh, for your, your generosity, for, for giving, whether it be here in person um, or um, online as well. If you're a guest today, uh, thank you so much uh, for coming out to see us this morning. Uh, it really means the world to us that you're here. I would love a chance to say hello to you after service. So I'll be hanging out just at the guest service kiosk um, after things all said and done. So please uh, stop by. Um, also, I want to say hey to our friends who are watching us online. We're hoping you're having a great day wherever you find yourself. And we also know most people check us out online uh, before they ever step foot in here. And so we hope we'll see you here in person uh, real soon. In fact, we think next Sunday is a great Sunday to be your first Sunday with us here in person. So let's make that happen. All right. So uh, we are in Christmas playlists. And if you missed last week, uh, basic idea is this. We're looking at just some popular Christmas songs and we're kind of building a Corinth Christmas playlist. And we're looking at these songs and just saying, what do they really reveal? to us about the Christmas story. What are some truths that we can learn uh, from these these songs? Last week, um, our song was the most wonderful time of the year. Would you like me to sing it for you? Nope, not going to happen. All right. And so, but then, you know, it's a great Andy Williams song, most wonderful time of the year. Um, but what we said last year, or last week is that Christmas is a wonderful time of the year, but it's also a stressful, you know, time of the year. And so sometimes it's like, well, it's the most stressful time of the year. And, and what we said is, is that even the first Christmas was a stressful Christmas. So if you're enduring stress at this time of the year, that's, you know, part of what the season is about. Uh, today's song, I'm excited about this song. This is a good song. This is a Motown song. How many of you like Motown music? Good stuff. It's got some funk, a little beat to it. It's good stuff. It was written uh, back in the 60s by Anna Gay, Alan Story, and George Gordy. And it has been recorded by all kinds of different recording artists. Uh, Michael McDonald has done a song. You guys remember Michael McDonald from the Doobie Brothers? Date yourself for just a second. You know, eating that microphone with the big gray beard, you know. It, it is, he did it. Um, let me see. Pentatonix has done a version of this song. Um, John Legend has done this song uh, recently. The one that blew my mind, okay, was this. Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen <laughs> from Full House. They made a Christmas album, okay, and they, years ago, and they did this song. Uh, this song is probably best known, though, uh, by the Stevie Wonder version. Let's go ahead and, and play this song, and I want to know how many of y'all know this song. Let's go for it. Oh, yeah. How many of y'all know what we're doing right here? 1967. How many of y'all remember 1967? How many of you want to admit that you remember 1967? David, do you remember 1967? All right. How many of y'all know this song? Okay. You, you've heard this song. It's, it's a great song, and, and it's got a good little beat to it, so we're all ready to kind of start bouncing, do our white people dance. All right? All right. And so, uh, how many of y'all know the name of that song? What, you are the first one today, and you are in the choir at the 830 service. All right. And so... Um, 
And so that's the name of the song. It is what Christmas means to me. It's, it's a great song. You got a, got a great beat to it. All kinds of good things about it. But it's really just kind of about you know romanticizing the you know Christmas time of year. It's about candles. It's about singing. It's about the mistletoe. Which can I just say, 2019, we might want to revisit that whole idea that if you're under a plant, you have to get kissed. Okay, can, can we just revisit that now? And so uh, it's all about the romantic time of the Christmas season, okay? And love at Christmas is, is a great thing to be thinking about, to be talking about. But as we're building our playlist for, for Corinth, our Christmas playlist, though, um, here's the question I want to ask. What does Christmas really mean to us? What is Christmas really all about? What is this whole thing about? What, what is the big deal about a little baby that was born 2,000 years ago? Why do we make such a big deal about this? It's 2,000 years later. We're still celebrating the birthday of Jesus. I promise you, in 2,000 years, nobody's going to celebrate my birthday. All right, But for Jesus, we're still doing that. What is the big deal here? So let's just kind of ask this question. What does Christmas really mean to us, okay? And so, you know, the Christmas story, it's a great story. And a lot of us, we're just familiar with it. Even if, like, this is the, the first time you've ever walked into a church, um, you've probably got a gist of what this Christmas story is all about because you watched a Charlie Brown Christmas, you know, and Linus got up and he read the Christmas story, quoted the Christmas story from the Gospel of Luke, but did you know that the Christmas story is only told in Matthew and Luke, two of the Gospels? And in those two Gospels, the Christmas story only accounts for four chapters. It's a really small part of the story about Jesus. It's a really, really just small part of it. But it's got so much meaning and so many things that we can glean from this and pull, pull from the, this story. It's, it's a very familiar story. Um, it goes like this. An angel appears to, to Mary. You know, the, the young teenage girl appears to Mary. And this is what it says in Luke chapter 1. The angel says, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. He says, Don't be afraid, Mary, because you have found favor with God. And you are going to conceive and give birth to a son, even though she is a virgin. You're going to conceive and give birth to a son, and, and you are to call him Jesus. And he will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. And all these things came to pass. Mary, even though she is never with a man, she ends up becoming pregnant. She, she runs off and she hides for the first few months at a relative's house. And then after about three months, she comes back and she talks to her fiancé, Joseph. And she says, Joseph, um, I'm pregnant. He says, you're what? <laughs> He's like, well, this doesn't make a whole lot of sense because I know where I've been. I know where you've been. And this doesn't work out. And she says, no, this is, this is from God. And he's like, this, this, this is crazy. And so Joseph decides that he's going to just like kind of divorce her. He's just going to kind of end this relationship. Wants to do it off to the side. He doesn't want to humiliate her. Doesn't want her to get in trouble. But as Joseph is contemplating this and is deciding to do this, Matthew tells us that an angel appears to Joseph. In, in the middle, and he just appears to him. And the angel says, Joseph, son of David, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. And so Joseph listens to the angel and he and Mary stay together. After about six months after that encounter, a little baby boy is born in the town of Bethlehem. And this, this, this birth is just different because after the baby is born, angels appear again. Angels are all over this story. Angels appear to a bunch of shepherds who are out in the field and, and, and they tell them about this, this baby that has been born. And so these, these shepherds, they're like, they, they leave their, their sheep, they leave their flock and they just, they run to this baby and they go and they see that the child that has been born, that the angels have announced. And after they, are, after they are done spending time with this baby, they go away and they're just rejoicing. They're overfilled with joy. And then at a later time, these wise men from the east, 
They, they follow this star and, and they end up and they come to the baby, to the child Jesus. And it says that these wise men, these kings from the east, they bowed down and they bowed down and they worshipped him. We've had two kids. No angels. Our, our kids are great, that's not what I'm saying. But <laughs> No angels appeared. Now, whenever people came and they saw our kids for the first time, they went away rejoicing, you know, because it was a great day. It was a great thing. But you want to know what didn't happen? People didn't bow down and worship our kids. It didn't happen. So, so what, what is it about this baby? What is it about this baby that causes shepherds to return just overfilled with joy? What is it about this baby that causes these men to fall to their knees and worship? What is it about this kid that is so different? Well, Matthew actually tells us. He, he makes a connection right after telling us about how Joseph had an encounter with the angel. This is what he says. He says, all this took place in Matthew chapter 1. This took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. Now, the prophet's Isaiah. This is coming from Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. This is what Isaiah, Isaiah said all those years before. He said, the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel. Which means God with us. God with us. Hundreds of years before Jesus was born, Isaiah is saying, hey, there's coming a day when there's going to be a child that's born and, people are going to, and that's going to be God with us. Now, the, the Jewish scholars, the teachers of the day, they, they'd read this Isaiah passage time and time again. They had read it, they debated it, they talked about it, and what they kind of just come to the conclusion was is that they believed this prophecy was true, but that it was not a prophecy that we should take literally. That what they kind of believed was like, there's going to come a day whenever there's going to be this great leader that rises up, and through his work, figuratively speaking, God will be present with his people through that work. Okay, that, that's what they believe. But what Matthew is saying is, no, 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 no. This promise is greater. It's bigger. It's better than what anybody ever imagined because it came true not figuratively. Literally. Literally, this child, this Jesus was God with us. That Jesus is Emmanuel. That means he is God with us in the flesh. That that human life that was growing inside the womb of Mary, that was going to be God with us. That that baby, whenever he was born, he was God with us. And that baby, as he grew up and as he became a man, he was God with us. Fully God, fully human. He is literally God. And so what that tells us is that, that God can came to be with us, that he's not a far and distant God. He is not this uninvolved creator. He's not Santa Claus just watching over you. No, he is with you. He is with us because the word became flesh in Jesus Christ. He was fully God and fully man. What does Christmas mean to us? It means God is with us. He is Emmanuel. Sounds too good to be true, doesn't it? Like some of you all are already doubting this. And you're like, no, it's just a story. You know, you're, you're doubting that and it's difficult to believe. And some of you, it's, just, it's difficult to believe because of the season that you find yourself in. Because it doesn't feel like God is with us. You're, or maybe you're just ashamed of what you've, you've done. Or maybe it's because of your, your doubts. My, my job today is this. I want to assure you today that God is with you. He was with you. And He will be with you. It's a very simple outline to follow today. God is with you. That's the first thing I want to tell you this morning. He is with you. Let's just say that God is with you. God is with you. I just want you to think about Mary for just a second. Mary's about 13, 14, 15, 16 years old. She's a teenage girl. You hung out with any teenage girls lately? I've got one in my house, okay, you know, and, and so I just got this picture of Mary, you know, she's there in her bedroom, you know, watching TikTok videos, you know, scrolling through Instagram and you know, or her fake Instagram account so her parents don't know about the things that she's doing there, okay? Um, and so she's scrolling through that, and then all of a sudden this angel just appears to her. I mean, can you imagine how terrifying that would be? I'm 40 years old. If an angel shows up to me, I'm terrified. I can't even imagine being a 15-year-old girl and an angel just shows up out of the nowhere. It just terrifies her. 
And so the very first thing that the angel has to say to young Mary is this. We've already read it, but look at it again. He says, greetings, you who are highly favored. But what does he say? Let's say it together. The Lord is with you. The very first thing that he has to tell Mary is this. Hey, hold on, hold on. God's with you. Because the assignment that you are about to receive, the task that you are about to to take on is so large, it's so big, it's so, so heavy, it's so weighty. I need you to know right up front, God's with you. You have found His favor. He's with you. He's not going anywhere. And Mary found this to be true. The Lord is with her whenever she gives birth to Jesus. The Lord is with her whenever they lost Jesus, which was just like parenting fail, right? And they they, they lose Jesus. The Lord is with her whenever they find Him in the temple. The Lord is with her as she stands there at the foot of His cross watching her baby boy give His life for the sins of the world. The Lord is with her. With her. God is with you, my friends. He is with you today. If you find yourself hurting, if you find yourself doubting, if you feel yourself just overwhelmed with everything that is going on right now, the Lord is with you. Do not be afraid. I love Psalm 118, verse 6. It just says this The Lord is with me. I will not be afraid. He's with me. He is with me right now. And the purpose of Christmas was so that God could begin a relationship with us. So that he could enter into our time and space. So that we could have a relationship with him. Because he is with us. Christmas is not just about him letting us know that he exists. He's got other ways that he can do that. This is him telling us he wants us to be near to him. That he has drawn near to us so we can draw near to him. No matter what the situation we are facing, you can always understand and you can always know that the God of the universe, the all-knowing, the all-powerful God, that God is with you and that changes everything. Because whenever you are alone, He is with you as companion. Whenever you are sick, He is with you as your healer. Whenever you are lost, He is with you as your guide. Whenever you are hurt, He is with you as your hope. Whenever you are in your sin, He is with you as your Savior. So praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion, the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles. He is with us no matter what we are facing. Somebody say, our God is with us. Our God is with us. He is with us right now. Number two, God was with you. And this is important because sometimes it's easier to see where he was than where he is, is it not? Sometimes it's easier to look back at an event and say, God was with me there. I couldn't tell it at the moment. But now I can see that he was with me. In the book of Genesis, there's a story of Joseph. This is a different Joseph than the Joseph of the Christmas story. But, but Joseph in his technicolor dream coat, Joseph, that, 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 that Joseph. Now, Joseph is, is an interesting story. You know, he, he's, one of the, he's like the youngest. He's his daddy's favorite. Um, in, any youngest children in the room today? Okay, any youngest? I want to give you some advice from the story of Joseph today. Because Joseph, he's got these dreams that go on to where it's like all of his older brothers, all of his siblings are going to bow down and that he's going to rule over them. And if you've got those dreams, fine. If you're the youngest, keep them to yourself. Because your oldest don't want to hear that. And Joseph, he's just kind of this, this cocky, just kind of brash kind of guy. And he just starts blabbing about all these dreams. Yeah, y'all are going to serve me. I'm going to rule over all y'all. Okay? And so what do they do? They beat him up, throw him in a pit, and throw him into slavery. So if you're the youngest, let that be a lesson. Take caution. But while he's in slavery, he, he works in a house and he's doing a great job. Then he's falsely accused of rape and he's thrown into prison. And it's in Genesis chapter 39, verse 21. There's an interesting little statement. It says this, but the Lord was with Joseph in the prison and showed him his faithful love. The Lord was with Joseph. Let me go out on a limb here and let me just tell you that whenever 
Joseph is in prison, it's difficult to see that God is with him in that moment. But as Joseph gets to the end of his life and he starts looking back and he starts reflecting, he's able to go, God was with me there. Because sometimes it's hard to see where he is in the present. You've got to go to the past. You've got to get past it to be able to look back. It's easier to see where he was than where he is. God was with you. This is, this is incredibly personal to me. Because I look back over my life. I can see these moments whenever God was with me. And I can see the, the way that, that he was taking care of me. I remember this one time, this, this was years ago. Um, my, my wife Jennifer and I, we had, we had just started tithing. Okay, in our marriage, we just started giving 10%. And we wanted to just really be committed to this. We wanted to do it because we felt like this is what the Lord says we need to do. And so we, we made a commitment. We hadn't been doing it. And so we made a commitment. This is what we're going to do. We're going to start tithing. And so we started doing it. We started giving 10%, 10%. Now, this was a point in our marriage whenever we had more love than money. You guys know what I'm talking about? Okay, okay. That's where it was. And so it came up to me where there's a, a medical bill. You know, one of those things that just kind of came up. And it's just like, oh, no, how are we going to do this? And I was looking at it. It's like, well, if we don't don't tithe for a month, we can pay for it. You know, if we don't tithe for a couple months, we, we can pay for it. But I was like, no, 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 no. We're going to be committed. God said, test me in this. See if I don't open the floodgates. See if I don't provide for you. And so we gave our tithe. And so we did that. And so it's that week, I'm walking up the, the hill to the mailbox and I open it up. And in there, there's an envelope from our mortgage company. And I open it up and there's an escrow error in our favor. And the amount of the check, y'all, was to the penny of the medical bill that we owed and I look back and I go God was with me right there right I remember this a few years ago it's about four years ago we had one of our older gentlemen um, they, they called us and they said he's about to go Okay, he, he's going to die. We want you to come and, and pray over him, and we're going to pray him into his reward. And so we got in the car, we drove over there, we prayed over him, prayed for him to enter into his reward, and four years later, he's still in there every 8.30 service, okay? So that's just telling you, my prayers don't work, okay? And so, and so he's still there. And it's like, God was with, with me. I can go all the way back to the year 1997, Gunnison, Colorado, CIY, right after my senior year. If we could walk in there and if that gymnasium is still there, I can walk you in and get you oriented and say, here is the spot where God called me into ministry and God was with me right in that moment. God was with me at Emory Hospital whenever I sat in a post-op surgery consult room with one of our older gentlemen as he heard from the doctor, your wife has terminal cancer. God was with me. And there were words that I was able to say that I promise you are not because I'm good. But because God is good. And he was with me. God was with me whenever I stood in this stage, on this pulpit, and preached the funeral of a teenage girl gone too soon. And we shared the gospel. God was with us. See, y'all, Sometimes it's hard to see where he is in that moment. Sometimes it's easier to see where he was. And if you'll look back over your life, you will see that God was with you in those moments. And our God is not only with you now, he was with you in the past. And the good news is, number three, God will be with you. He will be with you always. No matter what it is that you face, no matter what the future holds, God will be with you. I don't know if you ever find yourself wrestling with the future. What does it hold? What are we going to face? And the answer is none of us know, right? We don't know what the future holds. We don't know what, our, what holds for our marriage. We don't know what holds for our job, for our kids, for you know, the college choices that we're trying to make. We, we don't know what holds for our, our health. In fact, I, I don't even know that we could handle if we knew everything that was coming down the road. I think I'd be stuck in a corner sucking my thumb with a blanket wrapped around me, okay? I, I, just, I, don't, I don't think we could even handle it. We don't know. 
everything that is going to come about in, in our future. We don't know what will be, but we do know who will be with us. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. Oh man, we don't know what is going to be. But we do know who will be with us. And we have a hope for the future. Because of what we know happened in the past. And we know that He was with us and that He will be with us as we move forward, no matter what we face. That's why I love Romans chapter 8, when it just, Paul just says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble, shall hardship, shall persecution, famine or nakedness, or danger or sword? You're like, no, 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 no. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through Him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, neither angels, nor demons, neither present, nor the future, nor powers, height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen and amen. Amen. Now, you might want to argue against that. And you might want to go, listen, Turner, you, you don't understand. That might be true for some people, but you don't know me. And you don't know the life that I live. You don't know the things that I have done. You don't know where I was even just last night. You don't know. That might be true for other people, but, but you don't know Listen, nothing, no thing can separate you from the love of God that is in Jesus Christ, our Lord. I don't care what it is that you've done. Your doubts cannot separate you. Your mistakes cannot separate you. Your failures cannot separate you. Your disappointments cannot separate you. Your sin cannot separate you from the love of God that is in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Because God's grace is bigger than every one of those things. It's bigger than all of that. And he will be with you. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you, nor will he forsake you. And though I walk through the, the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. He is going to be with you. He will not leave you. He will not forsake you. When no matter what we face, no matter what difficulties we encounter, we are never, we are never, we are never, we are never alone. He will be with you. Because you want to know what Christmas means to me? This is the bottom line for you today. It's this. God is with me. That's what Christmas means to me. Not about the carols. Not about the mistletoe, not about all those great things. It is that God is with me. And he is with you. He has been with you. And he will be with you no matter what you face. So God, we thank you that this is what Christmas is all about. That this is what Christmas means. That you are with us. That you were with us whenever we went through whatever it is that we went through. And that you will be with us no matter what we face. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. The Bible says that the word became flesh. That means that, that, that Jesus was, was fully God and fully human. That means that Jesus experienced like the entire human experience. He knew what it was like to be tired. He knew what it was like to be hungry. He, he knew what it was like to, to scrape a knee bruise an elbow he knew laughter, he knew joy, he knew agony, he knew pain he was fully God and fully human so that, so that means on the cross he felt every nail strike that he felt every blow to his body, to his face that he endured, that he experienced agony. Fully God, fully human. He, he did that because he loves us. To forgive us of our sins and to be our sacrifice. 
Jesus came to be with us, to save us. And he did that by giving up his body for us. So let's remember that sacrifice today. Jesus, as we take your body and we take your blood, and as we remember your experience, help us to remember that you did that for us to save us. So we remember you now. Amen. Friends, there, there's no question whether or not God will be with you. God will be with you. He is with us. He, 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 he has been with us. He will be with you. That's not the question. That The question today is simple. It's will you be with Him? Will you be with Him? Will you give everything that you have over to Him? Are you with Him? Are you like all in with Him? Are you like one of those that's like, oh, I'm, I'm kind of in. I kind of do the church thing. Every once in a while or... You know, I, be, I believe, you know, I believe in God. Well, well, great. Even the demons do that, all right? Even the demons do that, and they're terrified whenever they think about God. The question is, are you with Him? Are you all in? Are you with Him, and are you ready to live with Him? And if you're wrestling with that, I just want you to know that you are not here today by accident. That God has been working on you, calling you, and bringing you to this very moment where you can hear this question. Are you with Him? Are you in? Are you all in with Him? And He wants you to know Him. He wants you to be able to say, I am I'm with Him. Just as He is with, with me. And maybe you're, you're just kind of wrestling with that. You're like, you know, Adam, I, I, I know, I know, I know. I, I want to know Him. I want to be with Him. But here's the thing. I've just got these things in my life. I've got to get these straight. I've got to get them cleaned up. I've got to quit, I've got to quit doing this thing. And once I, once I do that, then, then maybe I can. But right now, I'm just, I'm not good enough for this. And so if you're thinking that thought, I just want to do something for you real quick. I want to confirm that. And in this, with as much love and compassion, I want to say, you're not. You're not good enough. And neither am I, neither are any of us. None of us are good enough for Him. That's why it's called grace. That's why it's a, a gift that is given to us. Every single one of us, we are sinners in desperate need of a Savior. And Jesus Christ came down to be with us, to save us. He lived a perfect life to be the perfect sacrifice for us so that our sins could be forgiven, be made white as snow. They'd all be wiped away. So the question is, are you with Him? Are you with Him? He wants to be with you. Are you with Him? And once you understand that this is a free gift, this is something that you cannot earn, this is something that has been done for you, it's just like, what, what do I even need to do? The answer is this, you give Him your whole life. Not part of it. All of it. And you say, I'm all in. And I'm ready to follow Him. If that's you and that's where you find yourself today, let's do it today. And let's say, I want to be with him. Oh God, would you forgive me of my sins? If you're ready to do that today, we're going to sing a song. We're going to stand up. I'll be down here at the front. Our prayer partners will be as well. And we invite you to come today to say, I'm all in. I'm all in. Forgive me and let me be with you. Let's stand and sing. If that's you, we invite you to come. from their tombs and the angels stood in awe for the souls of all who come to the Father are restored and the church of Christ was born then the spirit lit the flame now this gospel truth of us shall not kneel, shall not fade by his blood and in his name For the love of Jesus Christ, who has resurrected me. Praise the Father, praise the Son.
Friends, thank you so much uh, for being here with us this morning. I hope we'll see you back here next week as we uh, wrap up our Christmas playlist. And I uh, hope to see you back here uh, Sunday. Um, also, if you're a guest, please stop by the guest service kiosk. We'd love a chance to say hello to you. And uh, so, so let's get to know each other there. And then as always, if there is something that you're wrestling with and maybe you're ready to say I'm all in, but you know, coming up during a song is just absolutely terrifying, uh, we, we understand that. Our prayer partners will be available in the Next Steps room, out this door and, and to the left. And they love nothing more than to talk with you, to pray with you about what God is doing um, in your life in this moment. But don't miss the moment, all right? You are not here by accident. Seize the moment. So let me, let me pray for you, and uh, we'll be dismissed, and we'll see you all here next Sunday. God, we, we love you. We thank you for the, the truth that you are with us, that you have been with us, and that you will always be with us, that you will never leave us, nor will you forsake us. And so may we walk out of here today confident that we are in your presence. And we pray that in the name of Jesus, Emmanuel. Amen. Amen.